Hello, welcome to a new series, Comic Selling Tips. I recently wrapped up my series on comic buying tips on eBay. And over the past many years, I have had all kinds of videos addressing the issue of um, addressing many issues as far as being a seller, whether it's in my uh, Tips on Tricks series or Art the Flip or you ask, I answer, everywhere. It's peppered, all kind of videos peppered all over the channels. And once in a while, somebody would, you know, put a comment on my channel and asking for help on selling. And then I had to go into all kind of search to dig out those old video. I didn't do a very good job labeling the title of many of my videos. So you know, a lot of times it's like, oh, it's in tips and tricks episode seven, eight. I mean, it's all kind of, all kind of nonsense that I have a hard time finding. So, I decided, let's consolidate some of this stuff is stuff that had been talked about before. But I want to try to put everything in an organized fashion in this series of video, so that future viewers will watch this series and not have to deal with trying to dig out a old video that has been around for five years. Things get lost on YouTube easily, okay? So for this very first video, addressing the issue that many people don't want to sell comic books would like to know. Um, first up, let's address the issue of grading in a different video. Okay, I'm going to leave that out. That's very important grading. But the most important things for sellers, regardless if you know how to grade or not, regardless if you want to put the disclosure, I'm not a professional grader. Okay. <laughs> we all seen those disclaimer, right? Regardless of all of that, the number one thing that can help a seller is good pictures okay i harp on this constantly it still floors me today when i see people putting good books key books on ebay with one bad picture the picture of the front cover is not even good forget the back covers no picture and then the asking price is hundreds of dollars sometimes sometimes thousands Seriously, that cannot be good, okay? Am I saying that you can't sell something? Obviously, you can. I have. I have taken calculated risk buying books on eBay that had bad pictures because the price was decent and my eyes gave me enough information that I think I will get a good deal. And often I have been, I have done well by taking calculated gambling there, okay? But for the most part, a lot of time, I don't. I move on from those listings, okay? Because I can see even with the fuzzy pictures that the book is not in good shape. I don't want to care about the price and I certainly don't care about the disclaimer that I'm not a professional grader. Condition and price go hands in hand, right? Um, so as a seller, regardless if you know how to grade, regardless if you put the disclaimer, good pictures, clear pictures is a huge plus. Even for me, trust me, you, if you're not familiar with my channels, I sold a lot of things on my channel, okay? Raw stuff. And you don't see me trying to sell a book in a nasty poly bag that people can't even see the inside, okay? You might get my book later in the mail in a nasty <laughs> old poly bag because I don't bother rebagging and reboarding most of my stuff. But when I do make a video to sell my books, it's a clear, high-definition video. 
at least I hope my audience will tell me if it if the quality of the videos are crappy. But that's what I need to do. I need to show clear pictures of the books so that people can make informed decision. They don't have to trust my grade. Okay, I expect people, my buyers, to at least know enough to trust their own grading standard, whatever that is, okay? If they trust me, that's nice, but I want them to at least have a grade in their own mind so that they don't have to agree with me. It's okay. Not everything that I sold is correctly graded, right? It is what it is. Good pictures is a start. Doesn't matter if you know how to grade. It doesn't matter, okay? You can say, I don't know how to grade. That's fine. You don't need to put, I'm not a professional grader. You don't need, you don't need that. All you need to do is provide good pictures because that will help the buyers in making their own informed opinions of what the grade is. Now, as far as pictures, how many is enough? Okay, there are such things as too much. Yes, you, you heard it here. There are such things as too much. I have heard this many times on my channel. How can you grade books from just seeing a few pictures? <sighs> yes, I'm sure I'm not alone in getting that. Every time I talk about grading, sooner or later somebody would throw out the criticism. How can you give an informed opinion on a grade on that book by just seeing the front and the back cover? I'm not gonna even gonna address that, okay? Yes, there are potential flaw inside that we cannot see, but speaking from a guy that bought thousands, yes, let me repeat that, thousands of books from just seeing the front and the back cover, I did okay. It's very rare that I stumble across a book that I bought from just seeing the front and the back and say, oh my God, I missed this flaw in the interior. I'm screwed. Okay, so very rare, almost never. So providing clear front and back is the start. A picture of the center fold would be nice because it addressed two things when you do when you show the interior okay it show it provide two things a that the cover the centerfold is attached b it give the buyer an idea of the page quality yes is it yellow is it tan is it white so yeah showing the picture of the centerfold is really one of the best thing to do as far as you know, the top three pictures that you should show, front, back, and center fold, because it address the page quality. Without saying, common sense, good lighting, please. <laughs> it's nothing worse than taking a picture with horrible lighting, because then guess what? It just make the book look more tan, more brown, right? So do yourself a favor. When I say good pictures, good lighting. Doesn't have to be perfect. You don't need to be professional with light from three different angles to take out the shadow, no. But at least <laughs> not take the picture in the dark. <laughs> um, but that's the three main pictures. Now, you know, I don't care to see 10 pictures of different angle of the corners and the edges when there's nothing there that it will add to the quality of, you know, the book. But I do care if there are stain or moisture damage because when it comes down to stain, moisture damage or tears, size matters, okay? So if there are stains or some kind of moisture damage on the cover that can't be seen from the picture because a lot of time, especially on the front cover, you can't see the water damage. On the back, you can. On the back cover, you can, but on the front cover, you can't see, unless the cover is, you know, one of those lighter white or 
a lighter color on a dark cover you can't see the water stain the spot how big it is so do yourself a favor if there are moisture damage at least mention the dimension and the size two by three three by three or show a picture and then let the buyer form an informed opinion of what the grade can be now as far as additional pictures whenever there are flaws that can't be seen with naked eye far, far away like a tear interior tears okay even though it might not impact the grade at least took a picture of the tears on the page you know if we all know if you follow my channel a tear doesn't really hurt the book especially in the mid grade range in a high grade range yes but if you have an inch tear on a page for mid grade book low grade books it means nothing okay but feel free to take a picture of that to disclose it so the buyer know okay because some buyers don't know how to grade okay and they will overreact when they see such flaw that is not disclosed okay trust me the last thing you want to do or deal with is a buyer that contact you and say oh my god the book has a tear inside it it has a two inch tear it cannot a book that is 3.0 cannot have a three inch tear on the interior page or whatever you don't even though he's not correct or he might not be correct you don't want to deal with that so try to disclose any surprises <laughs> because otherwise you would have to provide picture of every page right so to wrap it up good pictures good lighting at the minimum two pictures front and back ideally the third picture could be the, the center full picture yes and then any additional uh, disclose disclosure of additional flaws that might be helpful in determining the grade but that is how you should approach, okay? When it comes down to trying to sell, I will address the issue, this issue more in future video because I don't want to make the video too long, but at the end of the day, there's also a trade-off between the value of the book, right? Do you want to do, do you want to do all of that? As far as, you know, taking all the pictures that I talk about when it is a dollar book, a two dollar book, is that worth disclosing for a twenty-five dollar book? Yes, but there is such a thing as sometimes it's not necessary to do all of that for a dollar book. So I will address more on this issue in future video to keep this video nice and short enough. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.